Welcome back all my movie maniacs out there to the final cut. Today on the chopping block we have the independent full length feature film called Blood Slaughter Massacre. Yes, Blood Slaughter Massacre. How do you like that name? Another massacre on our hands here at the final cut as we see the story of James Finchner, who when he was an officer ten years ago barely escaped with his life from the knife of a mass murderer. Well, that case never quite was solved, and so ten years later he's now a detective and murders are popping up again, and he thinks this could be the same murderer, the Ripper, that uh, he barely escaped ten years ago. So he goes and investigates at sacrificing many things in his life to try to solve this uh, these new murders and see if it is linked to the Ripper, and if it is, try to stop this uh, mask knife-wielding fiend. Uh, the Blood Slaughter Massacre. It's like someone set the Wayback Machine to 19 Slaughter 4 and took all the elements we really enjoy of 80s slasher films and tossed them into a film. That's right. It's another period piece. And I, I really enjoy these. I like seeing these in the independent film because, one, you don't have the whole cell phone thing, for one. And two, it's it just great to see some of these retro films. Now, some of them are done poorly, Blood Slaughter Massacre is done well, okay? From the story that comes up, that they came up with, which has a feeling of kind of part uh, mass 80s slaughter and also part crime drama, because back then in the 80s, they were almost the same. If you ever watch any of the uh, Dirty Harry films, they almost had horror elements to them, okay? So it definitely has part crime drama and a lot of the elements we love in 80s slasher films. One with the iconic character of the Ripper. The simple look again, which I love, which just a mask and a knife, and that's all you need, and he still makes him pretty doggone creepy, okay? But then you've got some characters in here that are just uh, we've seen before, but performed so well on camera, namely the main character, D James Finchner, played by Matt W. Cody, loved his performance in this. In fact, everybody ups their acting. This, The acting that's done in this film is not the acting that you might expect from a film from this budget. Everybody does fantastic in this. His partner, played by Byron M. Howard, loved his character as well. Loved everybody's performance in there. It was very strong. Even the teenagers. The dialogue doesn't seem really made up or too cheesy. It, it works within the film and it definitely has that 80s feel. They made, they captured the essence of the 80s uh, crime slasher horror film. Uh, so definitely props there, okay? Love the attention to detail that they had in here from the wardrobe of the teenagers that uh, w the would-be victims, if you will, of the Ripper to uh, th just the little things like the one girl is carrying a tape Wa uh, Walkman. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Walkman, you know, it used to carry things. Not an iPad, uh, iPod or iPad, whatever. No, this had a tape you had to flip over. And it had hear headphones. And the headphones that you normally got were had these bright orange ear covers. And they had that. And I just love that little, little bit of extra detail. So there was a lot of attention to detail there as well. And then there's the score. The score definitely felt like it was ripped right from an 80s slasher film. Uh, it fits so well with the mood and the overall tone of the movie. Uh, I really enjoyed the soundtrack. It was a pleasant surprise. A lot of a lot of independent films, uh, horror films, kind of, you know, there's some things that they can do in their budget and some things they can't. Usually the music ends up getting a little bit uh, forgotten, but in this one the music is spot on as far as help setting that feel of an 80s slasher. So there's so many good things about Blood Slaughter Massacre that, that really... Are surprised me for this film, especially if you ever seen uh, going. I went back after watching this. Uh, I talked to the director and found out uh, they're based off of short uh, fake trailers that they also made. And uh, it, it definitely, you look at what they had there and how that came to the uh, full length feature. It's pretty impressive what they they brought. Okay, but the only thing, only thing that took me aback a little in Blood Slaughter Massacre, only thing at all was uh, the, the, some of the camera work. The, the camera didn't quite stay steady in some of the shots. And for me, I know that's a style that people use, and I know they were using it for some of it for POV, but just some of the scenes where the camera was moving where it didn't have to, okay? And, and that's just me. I, I, I don't like a, a moving camera as much. I do like a little more static shots. But let me tell you, the camera angles that they did in that were fantastic and definitely, again, 
ripped from the era that the film was set in. Also, folks, it does have the classic elements of gore, which there is plenty of, and done very well. Special effects in here, given a nod, and gratuitous nudity. You gotta have that for if you're doing some uh, uh, tribute to the 80s slasher B film. And that's what this is, folks. Blood Slaughter Massacre is done very well. Top-notch performances. I think they're deeper performances than you may expect from a film made on a budget of this, uh, you know, this nature. And overall, I think if you could catch Blood, or, Blood Slaughter Massacre at the film festivals, uh, it's going to be hitting the festival scenes. You should do it. It's worth your time. It, it is. It is in the just one of those many things that I try to bring to you and let you know independent horror is where it's at for the entertaining horror film, for the ones that are done well and for being made by people who just love films. And Blood Slaughter Massacre, again, goes on the shelf as one of those films. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, keep that ticket stuff.